Hey everybody, Dom here. On December 3rd, 2020, as part of the Smith's holiday update, a map was added to Team Fortress 2 called Whatville. Immediately upon release, the map was berated for its negative characteristics. The map is large and garish. It's visually noisy and unpleasant on the eyes. It's too linear, suffering from an absence of side paths for flanking, and overall, it lacks variety. It's mostly wide open similar looking areas, with large sight lines, and an insufficient amount of cover for players to get behind. This map has many problems, but here in this video I'd like to focus on one in particular. That being, how badly the map seems to run within Team Fortress 2. Let's investigate why the game client struggles to render this map. In the Source Engine, the engine Team Fortress 2 runs on, maps are made up of chunks called viz leafs. They're usually rectangular prisms and they're created when a map is compiled, when it's converted from a level editor file into a file the game can run. Viz leafs are used to determine what should be rendered. When the client's camera moves inside of a map, it travels between VizLeafs. When the game thinks a VizLeaf is out of sight, it stops rendering the contents of the VizLeaf. All players, props, level geometry, and particle effects in the space vanish. As far as the renderer is concerned, they don't exist. In other words, when you walk around a corner and can no longer see an area, it disappears. This saves computing resources. What's the point of rendering an area you can't see anyways? VizLeafs by themselves aren't perfect. For this form of optimization to work well, it needs the assistance of the map creators. When making maps, it's necessary to place down things called hint brushes and area portals to manipulate how viz leaves are created. Doing a poor job or neglecting to do so altogether can lead to large portions of a map being rendered unnecessarily. This is what fills main optimization problem. In most areas, large portions of the map are rendered despite not being visible. While this problem exists map-wide, let me highlight two areas in particular. Here is one of the blue team's first spawn rooms, the one with the trippy walls. From inside the spawn, a large chunk of the outside is rendered, despite being impossible to see. The same could be said in reverse. The inside is rendered while outside. Almost the entire map is rendered from this point, even places far away above the spawn room. While nearing the final checkpoint, players pushing the card at the end of the map can look down and they'll pointlessly be rendering the contents of their first spawn room. The reason to point out this spawn room in particular is because it could have been optimized. There exists a bend in the path leading out of the spawn. If this was a different map, the bend in the path leading to the outside would have utilized hint brushes to make it so the outside wasn't rendered while inside, and vice versa. Look at this area between the first and second stage of Dust Bowl. This is a good example of a location that uses a bend in line of sight for optimization. Players must travel down and back up to go between these two areas. Because of this bend and the inclusion of hint brushes, things on the other side are considered not visible and are stopped from rendering. Here's the blue team's other starting spawn room. This spawn room also has a bending path leading to its exit. It could be that there was an intention to optimize the map, but the optimization was simply not implemented. That would explain why both spawn rooms have this architectural feature. Alternatively, it could just be coincidental, and the bending paths are used to minimize weapon damage entering the spawns. Regardless of intention, it's a shame the opportunity to optimize was not used. Level design plays a role in optimizing a map. Whatville has large open areas with few cuts in line of sight. Even if hint brushes were placed throughout this map, it's unlikely the map's performance would improve a lot without also performing a large overhaul. Separating areas into smaller areas and adding more side paths would be ideal. Side paths are used to lower the likelihood of many players occupying the same location at once. Many players in the same location can be resource intensive. One form of game optimization the Source Engine utilizes is dynamically shifting levels of detail on props. Props are things like barrels, train tracks, and trees. Players' cosmetics and weapons are also props. When a prop is close to the camera, taking up a significant amount of screen space, it uses its highest detailed model. When the camera moves further away, it shifts into a lower detailed version of itself with fewer polygons. Props can have multiple versions of themselves that get progressively lower detailed as the camera moves further and further away. Rendering lower detailed models saves computing resources. Why render things at the highest detail level when the camera is so far away none of the fine details are seen anyways? On Whatville, all the props created by Valve, like the door frames, barrels, and resupply cabinets have multiple levels of detail and thus utilize this form of game optimization. All the custom assets do not have multiple levels of detail, remaining at their highest level of detail regardless of how far away they are. This map uses a lot of custom assets. All the fences, bushes, and windows are all custom. The trees are custom. 
Uh, by the way, have you ever noticed the leaves on the trees are actually little hats? That's a cute detail. The payload card is custom. And lastly, all the funky contorting buildings are made up of many custom props of various sizes. This is bad in terms of optimization. Props not lowering in detail with distance isn't good to begin with, but this problem is compounded by the previously explained problem where the entire map is basically all rendered at once. So, not only is the game client rendering large chunks of the map needlessly, but the large chunks contain a high number of props perpetually set to their maximum level of detail. Another form of game optimization the Source Engine utilizes is Prop Fadeout. Props can be set to vanish at distance from the camera. Map makers have the ability to set two values on a prop by prop basis. The distance at which props will start fading out, and the distance at which props will fade out completely. Once a prop fades out completely, it's no longer rendered, and so computing resources are saved. The reason to use two values is so that the fading out transition can be smoother and more difficult to notice. On Whatville, very few props utilize this form of optimization. Some small props in the spawn rooms, portions of the payload track, and the sign fade out. That's about it. If I move the camera incredibly far away from the map, all that's left are props that don't have maximum distances and never fade out. Everything you see right now that's cyan colored is a prop, and they're all still rendered at this distance. The reason why Whatville runs poorly is, it's poorly optimized. Large chunks of the map are needlessly rendered when out of sight. The custom props don't utilize multiple levels of detail. The majority of props don't fade out of existence at a distance. Many optimization tools and methods go unutilized or are ignored. And lastly, the shape of areas leads to large sight lines and many players pooling in the same location. This has been an explanation as to why the Team Forge 2 map, Whatville, runs poorly. But I still have one more thing to say. While doing research and playtesting this map for this video, I noticed the fog felt a little off. It's a dark blue that doesn't match the skybox very well. I decided to change it into something more subtle. This is the result. I hate to kick a map when it's down, but I think this white fog makes the map look way better. Here's another comparison shot. And here's another comparison shot. Anyways, that was a weird tangent. Now you know why this map runs poorly. That's it, that's all, thanks for watching. Au revoir.